Hello, this is Alex from MIDISequencing.com, and today we're looking at how to set up smart controls in Logic. What smart controls do is they allow you to assign a fader to a parameter in your plugins, okay? And then you can assign that fader to something on your MIDI controller. Thus, you can control some parameter with your MIDI controller. And you can do this for pretty much any plugin and almost any parameter in your plugin. So to get to smart controllers, you go up here to the smart controller button and you'll see them pop up down here, something like this. Press this little I button. And you can change how they look by selecting from any of these sweet looks. Mellotron, what does that look like? Looks like that. Generic wood. Good old generic wood. I personally like to have this modern synth 8 because it shows them all in a row. And that is how they are on my MIDI controller as well. Okay, so to ass assign one of these knobs, I mean fader knobs, same deal in this scenario. I know it looks like a knob, but fader, same thing. We're going to go over here to external assignment and you click learn and you'll see it gets red. Then you just move whatever fader you want to control it on your MIDI controller. Okay, so now I got one assigned to it. I just click learn again and now I'm able to move it. Once you assign something from your MIDI controller to a smart controller, I want to show you something real quick. You no longer get the MIDI data into Logic, okay? So before I was getting control change 102 from channel 1 MIDI going in here, but now if you look up here when it moves, there is no MIDI data coming in. But if I move a different one, that's what a normal MIDI control change looks like coming in. So the reason this is significant, if you have something like control change 11, which is expression, and you use that to control, say, the volumes on your string samples, you will no longer receive control change 11 from the fader on your MIDI controller if you have it assigned to a smart controller. So that is something to be aware of. To assign this knob or fader to a parameter on a plugin, you click learn up here on the parameter mapping and then you can select any of these things on a plugin. So if I want to do the polyvox character, I just select it and you'll see it change to the polyvox character. I can change it to the CompuVox, CompuVox bats or the CompuVox bits or the overall dry and wet. Now when you're done assigning, click learn again. And now when I move my fader on my MIDI controller, you'll see that this parameter of the vocal synth plugin moves as well. Smart controls are for your tracks. So these eight smart controllers are for this one track. I can mix and match from different parameters of different plugins. So if I take an EQ and add it to the same track, we can add a high pass filter on here and assign this to something on my MIDI keyboard and then map it to the Hertz. And now when I move that fader on my MIDI keyboard, it'll move where the hertz are. But I'm also still able to control the global dry and wet, which I had assigned before on my vocal synth, which is on the same track. You see both are moving. Cool. So now let's say you create a new track, an audio track, for example. And you put on a plug-in there, let's say a bit crusher. You see your smart controls pop up. 
and it's nice and distorted. All right. I'm going to change this. I like to have this modern synth 8. Okay, now we're back. Now, one thing to note, we have already assigned these smart controllers on our MIDI controller, so these are still assigned to the MIDI controller. You only have to assign those once. And for every track, they'll control the same smart control. So we have smart controls 1 through 8 here. Okay. Now let me show you how you record in smart control information. What smart controls actually do is they are parameter automation. So to record them in on the fly, for example, you would change your automation mode to, let's say, touch. And when you press play and move your smart controllers around, we're writing in data. And you can do this with your MIDI controller, or you can just move them with your mouse, too. All right, now when we stop it, when we stop it and you want to see what you've done, I'm just going to change it back to read. You press A for automation and you'll see we got different automation down here. And you can go either down here, it'll show you what you wrote, or you can go up to your smart controllers and it'll show you the same thing. So resolution. And you can edit that data with a pencil tool, you can erase it, whatever you want to do. And that's how you can control your plugin parameters with your MIDI controllers in Logic with the smart controllers. We got a bunch of info on music production on midisequencing.com. Really, our best stuff is in the articles, so please go over there, read them, learn some stuff, grow, sound better, be a better producer, musician, and please like and subscribe. Peace.